Sting, Gungnir, Hanzo, Buster, Commons, Rares, Legendaries, Epics, Artifacts, BFGs, Master Swords, Mjolnir, Narsil, Frostmourne. Let's talk about fantasy weapons. Wait, can I say weapons on YouTube? Oh no. Is YouTube gonna hit me with the panhammer? Let's talk about adventurer equipment and sundries of the pointy variety. Yeah, while most weapon, uh, adventuring gear and bladed accoutrement in fantasy RPGs and media are based off of classic historical armaments, there is a balance between subtlety and absurdity that pushes them into the fantasy realm. When designing weapons for Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, this balance that you can push even further to the extremes because of the introduction of magic. There's gonna be a large amount of combative gear. Combative gear? Combat gear? Either way, there's going to be a lot of it that's at the basic variety, but we also have the potential for pieces of equipment that have been either magically infused or enhanced by magical means. Starting at the very basic, most characters can get away with very generic weapon r r equipment, especially when you're starting at level 1. Having traditional dagger or sword is going to make the most sense for your character. Later on, as your character progresses, you may find new items and new thingamajigs, and your gear should match your ever-growing power level. Whenever I start designing one of these from, from scratch for a character, I always start by doing a profile front of it, usually based off of a basic type, because it needs to match something in-world that is relatable. If your weapon doesn't make any sense, it it's going to look like you're just carrying around a big piece of scrap metal. Enchanted weapons don't have to look crazy. They don't have to be these elaborate vision things because the magic is on the inside. And there are great ways to show that something is enchanted, whether it's add a little bit of intricate detail or it has runes on it or it glows or it is on fire. They can still have that basic weapon shape still be very powerful looking, especially if they follow a certain motif of the character, whether it be a symbol of a deity or an eyeball from a cursed demon that's encased in it. They don't have to be huge, crazy weapons. I see a lot of people trying to describe their characters by the weapons they wield, and it, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially in a verbal narrative. Describing their characters by only the weapons they wield, though, can get kind of strange and shift the, the contrast of your character. If you don't have a very good character flushed out, but you have a really good weapon idea, then it's okay to just do artwork for that item, especially if it's an ancient artifact or a relic that needs to be told for the story. When I start drawing my weapons, I usually use a lot of symmetry because that way I can get the basic shape down and I'm designing specifically a profile. It's totally fine to go the route of something that's more asymmetrical, like a scythe or a falchion. In those situations, it's great to pull out an S-curve or a French curve or whatever you want to call it and really start getting the basic shape for your weapons before you start adding any detail. It needs to look relatable before you can start really hitting the fantasy side of things. If that doesn't work for your character, that's fine. If you don't have a program that would allow you to use symmetry, you can always draw one side of it and then copy it over. I always do this before I start trying to add the weapons to the character because if you want to show off how elaborate or cool a weapon is, it really should be shown off as a display piece. And then later, you can decide how much of that needs to actually go onto your character, whether that's just the hilt showing, or if it's strapped to their back, or if they do need to hold it as if they are going to use it as a full weapon. Like If that's the cool thing and you don't have a good character idea yet, you start there and, and, and build from that. When you're designing these types of fantasy weapons, the thing to remember is that they need to be rooted in something familiar, starting with the basic structure of a sword or a spear or a lance or a mace, and try to work out what makes it right for the fantasy setting or specifically your character. Some characters are described by their gear and that's okay. Other times it might be nice just to have it as an aside. Trying to find the place to show off that great sword in a character portrait is kind of difficult and it doesn't always look good. Sometimes you just need to have your character and sometimes you need to show off your grand self-defense accessories. But they need to be rooted in something that is familiar. A fantastical pizza cutter the size of a barn will not fix your bland, boring character. You don't have to go crazy with your designs, especially if your character is well-developed. You can get away with a lot just from a single portrait or a bust. Moreover, if you get to the point where your character is developed enough that you can start picking weapons that would augment them, then you start making things that make a lot more sense for your character. If they need to use a scythe and that's, you know, a very asymmetrical weapon, it's not something that people will just have on their back or, you know, tie into their belt. It's something that they're going to be carrying around and it will start defining them as a character. Adding the weapons in is usually flavorful. It should accent your characters. It should add to them. It should not be the thing that makes your character cool. And for those of you that need the giant weapons, I get that. Sometimes you just need to hit someone with something the size of your own body just to feel better about the world. I mean, look at Monster Hunter. 
all their pew pew pews and stab stab stabs for that monster hunter universe are insanely big and intentionally so and this is a case of most players being defined by their pointy instruments of choice or tubas or whatever and it can be a lot of fun to do that flinging a hippo sized trombone around doesn't fit every world really should be something that you bring up to your dm before you make a character that does so before you start flinging your trumpet around at your opponent that being said there are examples of overly exaggerated equipments in other video games such as the final fantasy world or with world of warcraft the buster swords and orc shoulder pads of video games come from a need to clearly show what the item is in question in a 3d medium and with as little memory usage as possible the 20 year old consoles just didn't have the ability to have high fidelity items and intricate detail without adding a lot of polygons and in case a lot of memory usage this does however make these iconic items what they are and i'm sure everyone named xx sethroth x cloud leroy jenkins for life will pretty much stem from these kind of iconic boring weapons like they're just big that's it that's the whole it's just just real big both seth mclongsword and girthy mcleod over here uh, had very simple designed blades, and both were brought into the realm of fantasy by the sheer size of their, well, their tools. This is starting to get off the rails. But my point being that you can do a lot with a little. You don't have to have these overly complex designs that look like chopped up leaves or, uh, I don't know, key blades to make these iconic items of inventory for your character. Uniqueness can come from taking a very simple pre-existing idea, such as a short sword or a bow or a shovel or a utility knife, and just adjust one of the properties, like the size of the material or the girth big boy this can include things that aren't normally found on the battlefield like scythes or pitchforks or other tools and equipment that that we are familiar with but have been adapted to military use so there are some great war glaives out there and war scythes things like the mythical hanzo sword wielded by the bride in that non-youtube safe named movie we'll call the retirement of william wahelium the hell is will helium with will will <clears throat> i've forgotten how to say words william retirement of william i gone done goofed myself it is a rather traditional blade but the mysticism behind it comes from the way that it was crafted and built and this to me is more interesting for developing fantasy weapons than making them look crazy and like World of Warcraft style, too big and too jagged. You can get it as crazy and ridiculous with a size and design as you want without going all the way to say like Saints Rose, giant bat. Can I say that? Is that a word? I mean, that's a thing. I guess it's a word. Not like, it's both a thing and a word. Gross. All right. But instead, you can infuse the weapon with lore and fantasy in the, from the world that you are specifically inhabiting. A normal sword blessed by a patron deity or gives the player a feel of power without defining them in the way a chainsaw gun would or a dagger cursed by an evil lich. You don't always have to look so sinister and evil like with a skeletal hand from a fallen acolyte forever gripping the onyx blade. Create this type of painful handguard. No, I've never, I've never used that in a game. Who would want that? I mean, that's silly. It's not like it sucked the souls out of the victims or anything. Okay, maybe it did. So what? It was for a necromancer, and it was supposed to be obviously evil. Don't judge me. What's important is that the magic or the flair that you put into the weapon doesn't have to make them visually crazy. They can, but they don't have to. Most of the time, unless a weapon is specifically important to a story, I won't give them a definite visual descriptor. I want the player of the games to come up with their own image and what they think makes it look so great. I will say things like, oh, it's amazingly built. The metal shines brightly. Oh, you've never seen a blade this sharp before. Because when I do describe a weapon of note or unique make, it stands out to the players. And that's important that they should remember it. And they will remember it. Adding magic and flair to a weapon is one thing, but visual cues and descriptors are very important for describing power levels of NPCs to your players. Teasing a really cool weapon that one of the players might want is a great incentive for pursuing conflict between them, or even to entice them into a big baddie. Not every NPC will be remembered, but when you run into a soldier with a flaming Zweihander on their back, they'll probably remember that guy. The mystique and prolific nature of epic weapons can define a character or even an arc. The Hanzo sword, while the style is very simple, the lore and the wielder bring it to a, like a mythical renown. Excalibur, I would argue, Argue is almost more famous than King Arthur, and lightsabers, don't sue me Disney, are quintessential to the Star Wars experience, more so than the Jedi or the Sith. There is a lot to be said about a good blaster weapon, but that's a totally different video. The weapons and tools define our fantasy adventures. Not that you can't have one without the other, but they help inform the power level of you and the world and your characters. Think about what level of fantasy you want and what would work well to tell the story. Sometimes all you need is a rock and a stick. Have we talked about Magical Stone yet? I really like the idea of a hardcore Dark Souls style gameplay. If your players start with literally nothing and are forced to scrape by, 
and eventually find one of those magical weapons, it's even more impressive. You know, talk with your DM and your group about what fantasy level you want and are interested in playing before you start a session. While high fantasy is kind of the norm and most D&D games follow that level of continuous weapon progression and adding insanity to insanity, where min-maxing is king and spells fly freely, sometimes playing low-level fantasy where a plus one weapon can make all the difference in combat is quite entertaining and rewarding. Shoot, how long have I been saying weapons? Curse you, YouTube demonetization gods! Back on track. And that concludes the historical significance of magical weapons and the rise of modern fantasy. Stated out solely for the purpose of, um, edu dang it. YouTube isn't gonna like this video. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. If you have a cool magical item or a giant trombone that you wanna talk about, just drop it down in the comments below. Our Discord server is up and growing, and uh, if you're interested in D&D or fantasy art, come and join the discussion. I will post the link down below in the description. There probably won't be a Patreon post for this video, but video but but i will be adding some new additions to the patreon tiers coming up in the next few weeks i'd like to start doing something a little more community based where either i take characters or homebrew ideas from the community and start drawing them but we'll see where that goes also if you have a cool character that you'd like to see drawn you know drop it in the comment below i don't know if i will be able to get to those anytime soon but yeah, i'll start making a backlog we'll see what happens as always remember to keep your dice on the table and your plus one flaming sack of phones sacks of phones sack of phones Sack of phones. Supposed to make a bugbear joke? Instead, make a sack of phone jokes. <laughs> sack of oh, gee, crap. Seriously, though, don't let your bugbear bards play flaming saxophones. They're flammable. Everybody knows that.